So anyway, we're standing, you know, you know, in our places, looking at the stage. The opening band is wailing away on stage. Ted Nugent, okay? <laughs> exactly. Uh, now, in this wonderful house tonight, maybe 1% of you or less have a Ted Nugent record. But a vast majority of you have an opinion of Ted Nugent, because he is one of the most unsubtly quotable people on earth. He never goes, hi, I'm Ted Nugent, have a nice day. He just says really fucked, loaded stuff, and he divides people easily. Either you're into the guy or you're not. You can't be neutral on the topic of Ted Nugent if you've ever been in front of him talking, because he's just, well, a lot of people think he's a prick. I might, might be one of those people, but... <laughs> So anyway, he's playing, and I have not seen the Nuge play for 25 years. Back in 1880, when I was a young man, <laughs> me and my friends used to go for like $8.50 and go see Ted Nugent play at this 18,000-seat place called the Capitol Center. And we used to watch Nugent go on stage for two and a half hours and break audiences into little tiny pieces. He was so good. And so now, 25 years later, I'm standing in front of Nugent, and he is playing his ass off. He's got the hollow body bird land. He's rocking. He sounds great. He's singing well. I'm like, whoa, the Nugent, he can still do it. He's got to be 50-something, and look at him up there. He's looking great. And so he comes to the end of the song, and he takes this beautiful gig, and he throws it right into the sewer. He starts talking, and he ruins it. I'm gonna play so sexy tonight, I'm gonna have all the faggots eating pussy. 20,000 people go, oh, uh -huh. hmm, yeah. At least three men around me are like, there's a faggot in here? No, we're okay, nudes. We're, uh, we've swept the perimeter. No homos. Keep rocking. <laughs> so the nudes keeps playing, and he does two songs back to back, mercifully not saying anything. And then he comes to the end of the two songs, and he yells out, If you don't speak English, get the fuck out of my country. I wanted to go home so bad right then. I'm like, ah, eh, that is so lame. That is so not rock and roll. You know, I think... If you don't know English and you live in a country that speaks English like America, like Australia, and you're a citizen here, don't leave. Just learn English. What, how long is it going to take you? 90 minutes? Okay, English-speaking countries use like one zillionth of the English language. All you need is 20 phrases and 50 loose words, and you have mastered English. Fuck you, stop staring at my tits, I was here first, you're fired, stuff like that. <laughs> you know, fuck you, yes, no, and you're in, you're in. So don't leave, just take your lunch hour and master English. And what was really encouraging was hardly anyone around me responded when Nugent said that. He got like, like eight people out of 20,000 to go, because they were so high, they would have done the same thing if he said, I'm wearing shoes. You know? And so anyway, mercifully, he plays three more songs. He comes to the end of his gig, uh, which is signified by a guitar coming out of the ground on a piece of wire. He takes a bow and arrow and shoots the guitar. Four pieces of confetti fall out the back, and a barely audible explosion happens in the back of the guitar. Like... <laughs> and he got a checked woo from the crowd. Everyone went, woo. Get a budget, man. That was weak. So anyway, the Nuge leaves. So anyway. <laughs> oh man, my senility's gonna be bitching. I think I'll start now. So anyway, when you do the equivalent at a rock concert when 150 dB are screaming in your face, it is so hilarious. There I am, screaming along to Detroit Rock City, a song I know at least three or four words of. I find myself rocking out to kiss with my fist in the air. I do not remember at any time when I actually put my fist up there. I'm like, look, I'm like rocking out, like, what am I doing? What are you doing up there? I don't know, do they rock? And there I am singing, doing that same kind of bathroom singing at the top of my lungs. It was hilarious. I'm in this rock pose. Am I sad? So am I high? Burn. Burn in and in there. So am I sad? Who to be the doctor? Who? Ha ha ha! Ow! Get up, so am I 
lama do ba sa ma ha get down i'm a super lama ha ha whoo ha our drummer looks over and catches me and there's no way i can make it look like something else i can't go like yeah. boring i was like super sa whoa fuck it ah do our drummer looks over at me and goes like right on now you know. <laughs> and so anyway, they come to the end of the song. It's punctuated with all this fire and smoke. Paul Stanley, the band's frontman, comes to the edge of the stage. He goes, San Bernardino, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> I have always wondered why rock stars yell out the name of the city that they're performing in. All my life, 21 years on stage or longer, I've always been in places no bigger than this. And if I went, hello, Sydney, it would be so thoroughly insulting to you people. Because look behind you. You can see the exit door, the doorman. There's like 500 people here. We could all be on a first name basis in an hour. None of you are stupid. And you don't need to be reminded what city you're in. You all very well know. And so if I go, hello, Sydney, you're like, what are you talking about? We know where we are. Stop depersonalizing us. And so I've never done that, unless I wanted a folding chair tossed at my head. And so there's, there's Gene, there's Paul Stanley, rather, going, San Bernardino, ho, 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 ho. He turns into this rock epic. <laughs> and it was at that moment I understood why big rock stars yell out the name of the city or the town that they're playing in. Because the people in the audience are so high, they don't know where they are anymore. <laughs> When you are that stone, you have the mindset of a goldfish. Every 35 seconds, hello, it's a brand new day. And so everyone's like, oh yeah, it's a day. It's a oh, no. Oh. And then Paul did something that was amazing. He looked right at me, pointed at me, and went, I love you. I must admit, I'll tell you the truth for once, I was very standoffish at first when, when Paul confessed his love to me. I was like, you love me? You don't even know my name. Get fresh with me, Mr. Stanley. And I, it was interesting to me that he picked me out of thousands of people and in such a public way, you know. And, and so at first, I rejected his amorous advances towards me. You know, I was like, stop it, sir, please. And so the band slams into another song that I magically know at least three words of. And there I am making a total ass out of myself, having the best time. There I am, strutter to Muhammad. And people are looking at me like, ooh, la, la, la. We're just having the best time. And they play nothing but the greatest hits. And the band is running all over the stage like there's no tomorrow. And every single time someone goes into a lead, it's not like when you see bands these days, OK, it's time for me to do my solo. There's Paul Stanley, this, this guitar solo's for you, San Bernardino. <laughs> like, fucking hey, I love these guys. And there's like fire and smoke with everything they do. Five songs in, Paul has yelled out in front of everybody that he loves me three times now. And on the third time, I love you. He wore me down. 